This is a traditional ADR form. This is an organized and structured way to cue the ADR lines of a project. First, all ADR sheets should have the following information listed in the header. List the project title. Always list the name of the ADR supervisor, the person responsible for queuing the ADR lines. Always list the name of the ADR mixer and the ADR recordist. This is vital information should it become necessary to track down the ADR mixer to answer questions or to solve session issues. The reel number is listed. All ADR sheets should be organized by reels for easier organizational purposes. You list the page number as well as how many pages making up the ADR cue sheet list for that particular reel. Every cue is assigned a part number. The first number is the reel number, followed in numerical order, 01, 02, 03, and so forth. So the cues in this reel will be 401, 402, 403, etc. You list each actor by his or her character name. Then you list the exact dialogue you need to ADR. You add breaths or other vocal expressions other than dialogue in parentheses so the actor will know to add tisks, breaths, grunts, size, and so forth. You must be attentive to not write a single cue too long. You need to write a realistic cue, sometimes even breaking a long dialogue delivery into two or more cues, looking for logical breakpoints that will be comfortable for the actor to perform. As before, you list the exact dialogue you need to ADR. Remember, write a realistic cue sometimes even breaking a long dialogue delivery into two or more cues, looking for logical breakpoints that will be comfortable for the actor to perform. You list the scene number from the script here. This scene identifier can be very useful. So here is the cue sheet filled out. Note the lines with each character listed in performance order. Also note that these cues skip a box. This practice is often used so that the ADR supervisor has a blank box to work with should the director decide to add a line while they are actually in the ADR session. You learn how to be very flexible and give room for the moment of creativity or practicality. Here is ADR supervisor RJ Bobby Kaiser conferring with an actor on the performance of a given line. Let us look at the new kind of ADR form that he uses and learn the reasons why. This is another style of an ADR cue sheet. Note that this form is landscape in layout. It has fewer cues per page, but is much easier for the talent to work with and far more room for notes. This is exactly the ADR format that ADR supervisor Bob Kaiser uses as he handles major projects all over the world. You fill out the header form the same way for the same reasons. Always list the show title. The real number is listed here. In this case, you list the person who cued the ADR. Most of the time, this will be the same person who is the ADR supervisor. But in the world of multiple projects and compressed schedules, sometimes the precise cueing chores are delegated to another member of the ADR team while the ADR supervisor is coordinating talent and preparing the stage. The ADR supervisor is listed here. As before, you always list the ADR mixer and recordist. It is vital to list the version of the cut that you have cued. In today's world of fluid picture versions before the picture is finally locked, changes are an ever-present reality during the post-sound editorial process. There is nothing worse than having a QuickTime video version with one date and cue sheets with a different version. None of the timecode numbers will match. As before, each ADR line has a cue number assigned to it. The first number is the real number. The second number is the numerical order of the cues. The actor's character name is listed. 
As before, you list the exact dialogue you need to ADR. Remember, write a realistic cue, sometimes even breaking a long dialogue delivery into two or more cues, looking for logical breakpoints that will be comfortable for the actor to perform. You list the scene number from the script here. This scene identifier can be very useful. Explaining why we are ADRing the line. Wind buffet. Airplane noise. Unwanted background ambionic intrusion. In recent years, this has proved to be a very valuable notation. Why are we ADRing the line? I cannot tell you how many times a grumpy actor has gone off on a tangent because they do not understand the reason to redo their performance. What's wrong with that? I hear my line just fine. Instead of shaking your head in frustration and snapping back at the actor that they should remember that this is a Western, and if they would just listen to the line more closely, they would hear the jet airplane in the background. Listing the reason has softened the frustration factor considerably. As before, the first time code number is really important. The cue is listed at the first frame of modulation. This number will be seen by Colin Brad software and trigger a visual streamer along with the programmed audio cue of three beeps heard every 16 frames or one 35 millimeter foot prior to the first frame of modulation. As before, the second time code number is not as critical. Some ADR supervisors list this at the end of audible modulation, some factor in an additional beat as long as a 35 millimeter foot of time for overtones so that the line will not be clipped at the end. The rest of the page is filled out with the various actors cued in performance order. Last, but not least, you fill in the page out of pages for the ADR cues for this reel. This is Voice Q ADR, a new ADR software out of New Zealand from the Kiwa International Corporation. The script editor window displays the scenes ordered by their relative start times in chronological order as seen here. The operator loads in the QuickTime movie and sets the starts and stops for all the cues by marking the guide track in a timeline. You type in the dialogue for the cues in a special window. Now the software analyzes the track for each cue and then displays the dialogue on a running subtitle banner on the picture. The letters of the words are squeezed together or stretched out according to how fast or slow the line was said on the track. This eliminates the need for the actor to look down at his script as he is speaking his lines. All the dialogue is up on the screen. Each cue will be triggered automatically as the film is running, allowing the actor to do as many cues in a run as he wants. And like the Colin Broad video streamer, the software allows for the importing of cue data from other software via a delimited text file. This is the timeline editor window a horizontally scrollable timeline view that also displays a visual representation of the underlying soundtrack of the QuickTime movie file associated with the project as seen here. Audio file name strategy for ADR work. If you hope to find a particular ADR cue quickly and efficiently amid the hundreds, sometimes even thousands of ADR cues in a given project, you need to adopt a structured and disciplined protocol to name the ADR audio cues. This is a typical ADR cue name. Note the three-letter abbreviation for the show. This can be really handy, especially if you are working with multiple projects or you are dealing with archived material that has been pulled out to make a television version or a revised director's cut, or what have you. If the post-production facility you are working with is working on more than one project at the same time, this technique is even more vital. The first number is the real number. The second number is the ADRQ number. The actor's character name. The take number. 
Notice that you must place an underscore right after the take number. You must do this. If you do not, you will run into confusion when you start cutting in Pro Tools, as each time you cut the audio file, the Pro Tool naming protocol always changes the number after the hyphen. Thus, if you do not place an underscore at the end of the file name when you make a cut, Pro Tools will rename a subclip as Take 12 and Take 13. Placing an underscore at the end of the name will yield an entirely different subclip name such as take 11-01 and take 11-02, etc. This later renaming option is exactly what you want. I've got a little thing, a little picture of a sign that I took one time when I was doing a Beretta. I walked in the thing in the morning to get, uh, I'd got my wardrobe and everything on and figured I'd get me a cup of coffee and tacked on the doggone coffee wagon is this sign and it's a nice sign and I looked at it and I said, Jesus Christ. And I run and got the steel man who I'd just seen come in <laughs> and got a, Polaroid of this thing and I keep it in my script book and it says working for Universal is like fucking a porcupine a hundred pricks against one <laughs> God, hey do me a favor get me fired <laughs> please I'm with you